My, my name is Fred Lessens and um, I am uh, the leader of the UArctic network, uh, a thematic network. And I would like to uh, welcome my colleague from uh, Tromsø the University, um, Mr. Ragnar Rasmussen. Uh, he's a co-artistic leader with me uh, with um, the ensemble. And he will do a presentation. Yes, indeed. Thank you. <coughs> Let's see if this can work. Um, that. Yeah, so welcome. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as you can see, the, the U Arctic World Ensemble is an idea that goes um, from. Um, um, uh, yeah, we would like to, to, to establish uh, some kind of world ensemble, Arctic world ensemble that is circumpolar and that somehow we can work together and create uh, some kind of crossover uh, expression um, from all the different cultures and uh, uh, languages and uh, stories and, and whatever you can find in the circumpolar Arctic. And since we have the, the U Arctic, uh, also Arctic universities, it's 130 universities, um, not only uh, located in the Arctic, but the universities that has some kind of research interests in the Arctic. So they go together in this umbrella. Uh, so uh, that ga that gave us the opportunity to to search for for uh, um, for partners to work with. So um, as you can see, uh, right now we have met with people from Yakutsk in East Siberia. We have been to Canada, Manitoba, and Newfoundland, Labrador, um, the Highlands and Islands of Scotland, and also then also up in the northern northern Norway. Um, <coughs> So, uh, the way uh, this looks for us, uh, the, the, the world map in this, in this context is the, the, um, the Arctic, as you can see here. So, no, we, we are somewhere up here in the, in the north. So, we had an idea before the U-Arctic uh, to, to make a, uh, a baroque ensemble. You know, with early early uh, music, uh, the copies <coughs> of instruments and things like that. And then I was looking, following this line, and figuring out that I came to a place here that was called Urk or something. And I figured that maybe this is not such a good idea. There was not much here. But then the U Arctic, uh, the Arctic universities gave us the opportunity to start uh, thinking how a ensemble like this could look like. So uh, for us, in Norway, then we are, it's the, the, the Sami, the Sami people, the indigenous people with the Yoik, is somehow natural for us to start working with. Um, so, and just have to say that this is the, my first keynote presentation ever, so it's, it's a bit <laughs> cheesy, so you just have to forgive me, but I think it's fun to make things move and jump, and you can do a lot of things. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so, that, and, um, uh, we have been to, to Canada to meet uh, with the uh, Inuit uh, uh, people and also in um, 
these people are from, from Yakutia. Um, and we have been there, working with them, getting to know them, and um, they are up there. Um, First Nations in Canada, uh, the University of Manitoba, uh, Brandon University. It's up there. They are there. And uh, also, of course, we need to have the, uh, Scotland with us, uh, because they are so nice. They have a lot of nice stuff there. Um, and their, the music, the folk music, has somehow been influencing, you know, this pentatone music has been influencing North for a thousand years. So they are also with us in this network. Yeah. So uh, we have been two, uh, two, two of us from, from the Arctic University in, uh, in uh, Norway, in Tromsø. We have been traveling around. It's uh, this guy, Fred. <laughs> and uh, he's the, then there's a saxophone player uh, teaching uh, jazz saxophone at the university. Uh, and then it's me. <laughs> I learned a little bit more heavy. Um, I am uh, uh, the choral conductor, a professor of, of, of conducting. So and that, that my approach is also more like a, a classical musician. So. Um, so it's interesting, we have been traveling around, making friends and exploring the possibilities. So we will, of course, base this ensemble on the, on the indigenous uh, cultures that we have in the Arctic, but also uh, classical music, Western classical music. We have people like, for instance, this is Berit, she's a classical soprano. Um, that kind of uh, artist will be the, a part of the ensemble. When we travel around, we will have choirs. They will be locals. Um, we will have uh, rhythm sections. We will have, uh, you know, brass and woodwinds, uh, strings, and then also individual musicians that we would like to work together with, to be a part of the ensemble. They, they can be located wherever in this region and be a part of this, uh, this, this ensemble. Um, so, it, in order to uh, to make this a uh, legitimate project from, 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 for a university project, we need this to be uh, based on, um, you know, it, it, we need research. We need to figure out, we need, we need to collect uh, music and stories, and tales and, and expressions, whatever. We need to work together with the uh, musicologists and, uh, for instance, this guy. Um, that you will see quite soon. It will come from there. Uh, this is Tom. That's my winter beer. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Gordon. Uh, when we got to know him, we found him up there, left of Greenland, somewhere. So he doesn't spend much time in his office. Maybe a little bit to the left. Huh? Mm -hmm. Somewhere That's there. Right. Yeah. I don't know. You will tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. <coughs> so, and we, um, we will need to work together with composers. Uh, to, uh, we gather music and then we will base, uh, use that as a base to create new music, you know. And then we will make commissions for composers in the whole region, wherever they might be. Uh, we, the visual aspect is also very important. So we try to find and work together with uh, video artists, with light designers, but also with co costume designers, you know. So, to, so the visual expression, maybe dancers or people that deals with the choreography and, and the, the scenic expression. So uh, right now we work together with, uh, with light designer and video artists that do things like this. It's very nice. Um, so, and of course we need to make documentation from this. We will make recordings. We want the world to listen to us. And um, uh, this is also very important. So, so that's a part of the plan, is to make, make uh, document, uh, documentations from the original material, but also from the artistic material that we will create based on the, the original expressions and languages. Another very important part of this project is the, the, the teaching aspect. You know, it will be some kind of, um, we want the, 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 these professors and students working together. Um, and in order, you know, this is a so-called so sparsely populated uh, area, regions. So there's not, not a lot of people, there's a lot of space. So what we will drive the technology when it comes to distant teaching. 
virtual classrooms and distant teaching and also rehearsing, maybe even performing. So this, uh, this is me back at home in Tumsa, conducting a choir in Olo and one choir in the PT, also in Sweden and Finland. And I'm in Tumsa and we work together like that. Not in order to replace the meeting between the professor and the student, but somehow some kind of su supplement to that. And we, that will reduce traveling costs and the environmental things. And you know, it's a lot of good things about that. So we want to drive this technology and really see what we can get out of it. Do so, you, excuse me, do you like conduct them, uh, two choirs at a time, or are you teaching? I, I also conduct them. Yes. On the screen? Yes. And uh, so the, the latency between them can be uh, adjusted so it's, it's equal. So the only one that has a problem is me as a conductor. <laughs> so, I mean, and then as long as that's my problem, I can solve it. So um, if they are not together, I just simply need to adjust my, my hearing, my inner thinking, and my technique. And that's, that's no problem because everything goes through. And it's very interesting. It takes some practice, though. <laughs> Okay, so this is this is an um, important part of the uh, of the whole thing. So it binds us together. And we will use the technology. We will drive the, te the, the development of the technology. It's an important part of the whole thing. So uh, and uh, moreover, it is um, it is education. It's teaching, and uh, it's important for the students to play and work together with us professors. So it's, it's master learning, that's what we're talking about here. You know? <laughs> so, um, make sure we keep them on the dark side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, 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 and we use all kinds of technology that we can somehow... Um, it, it's becoming intuitive now, so we can really use this in the, in the way we work. To, uh, to communicate and create uh, new expressions also on this things. Yeah, so um, what do we want? The, um, we want to identify and explore what we, the people of the Arctic, what we have in common. For sure, something it has to be. I mean, we live here in the darkness under the hours, and in the summer it's the midnight sun all the time and all this energy and, uh, you know, I mean, we have a lot in common, for sure. Um, and we are also, I mean, we also need to celebrate the, our diversities. So we want to show, find them, find these things and, and uh, uh, identify it and celebrate it. Uh, we want to, through the collection and work with our traditional myths and the songs and dances, fairy tales, you name it, we want to create and present our, our reflection of the modern community of the Arctic, the, human, the Arctic human being. Not only, this, not only the tale about the climate change and, and about uh, how difficult and terrible everything is, but also about the, the, the life of the people of the Arctic in the modern sense. Uh, and we want to, to present the circumpolar Arctic to the rest of the world. This is, we want to tell the Arctic story. We want to go to New York, to Sydney, wherever. In the, we want out there and we want people to listen to us and, uh, and have some kind of understanding of the people living up here. Um, that's somehow, we want to tell stories. We want to tell the Arctic stories. You know, not only fairy tales and myths, but also the story of today. Mm. So that's somehow, um, yeah, back to this. Uh, so we need arenas to present these things. We work together with um, uh, the Northern Light Festival. We have the director right here, the, you know. So this is a very important uh, arena, but we also have, of course, uh, Festival in uh, Austria. There's, there's a lot of arenas here that are interesting for us. Um, but uh, right now, uh, um, the uh, Northern Light Festival is a very important uh, cooperation partner for us. Obviously, the Arctic University, and also, um, also the um, uh, World Music Institute is a part of this cooperation. They are located in New York, nothing less. <laughs> uh, so, and uh, I mean, it's actually ser seriously, they are working so that we can go to the United Nations 
and make a performance and tell Arctic stories. I mean, that's where we, that's what, where we are going. That's what we want to do. Nothing less. But first, first, we will bring all these people together, uh, not only on videos and on soundtracks and recordings, but we we'll bring them to Trumsa and we will perform. And we will bring Tom and also, for instance, uh, I mean, people like her, that is um, uh, the professor of behind this, the, the folk dancers from Yakutia. And, uh, so, all these people we want to bring to, um, to Tumsa and we want to start there performing and then we will go on tour. So, it's expensive. We have VIPs. Here's the number. So, um, just, yeah. just put up your iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, where, where's the VIPs number? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, anyway, that's, that's somehow the, the beauty of the idea. We have been traveling around already uh, quite a lot. We have been working a lot. Maybe, maybe some of you heard us last night. When we uh, presented a little bit of the music, the idea that we that we uh, that we have and that we would like to realize. So what you could hear, the choir was actually from Newfoundland, and those dancers they were from Yakutia. So and we do this together, but we would like to do this in person on stage. So thank you very much so far. Now um, Tom, mm -hmm. uh, it's all yours. Can you set me up. I will uh, see what I can do. Like that. Ronier is vastly younger than I am, and uh, so he's going to set this up, and I will have nothing that moves on my presentation, because um, that's good. not in my skill set. It's okay now. They're, 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 <laughs> they're, they're dazzled they're, they're already. Yes. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that, everyone. So. <laughs> okay, I should help yourself. <laughs> preface what I'm going to say by by mentioning that uh, a couple of months ago Ranier and Fred showed up in St. John's Newfoundland and uh, said we have this crazy idea and uh, can we meet and have a beer and they had me at can we have a beer uh, <laughs> it was clear that uh, we had something in common what we had most in common though was a, a commitment to engage with the cultures of the north and uh, what I'm going to talk about for the next 15 minutes or so is the experience that I've been privileged to have over the last 15 years working uh, from my position as uh, the Dean of Music at Memorial University in St. John's, Newfoundland with uh, the indigenous community um, that lives in our province 1,200 kilometers north of us on the north coast of Labrador. So f over this period of time, uh, I've been engaged with the Nunatsi government, uh, which is the uh, self-governing Inuit territory of northern Labrador, and uh, have been collaborating with uh, researchers, performers, and students from my university, and master musicians from the Inuit communities of northern Labrador. The fascinating feature about these collaborations is that they are not new that uh, the music that we used as the basis for our conversations was music that the Inuit of Labrador had been performing for over 200 years. Um, music that was originally introduced by Moravian missionaries uh, in the late 18th century. Music of the time, music of composers like Haydn, Mozart, and Bach, which had become introduced to the Moravian Inuit uh, and then rapidly adopted and then ultimately adapted to become something that uh, was no longer European music, but actually Inuit music. The Inuit became adept at uh, singing this music, uh, performing uh, the orchestral parts to the music, uh, and also created brass bands that animated every aspect of community life. Across two centuries of stewardship by Inuit musicians, uh, this music gradually abandoned its origins and found an expression, uh, found itself to be an expression of Inuit identity. Since 2003, uh, Inuit leaders uh, and Memorial School of Music have been working together to document this remarkable story of cultures and dialogue, learning through collaborative performance. Uh, in the north, uh, we've run workshops, we have joined community choirs performing at festivals, organized annual band camps, and trained Inuit youth in the techniques of documenting their unique musical culture. 
We've also brought Inuit elders and music leaders to the south to coach uh, university students on their traditions, to perform with them, to be accompanied in recording studios by our students, uh, and uh, to be showcased in national festivals. We've, uh, at the same time as been engaged in this activity, also witnessed a revival of pre-contact uh, Inuit traditions, uh, particularly Inuit drumming and throat singing, traditions that had been uh, discouraged by the Moravian missionaries and all but vanished, but are now very vibrant again. This process has been sometimes challenging, but the results have been really powerful, both in musical and in human terms. Uh, we've learned a lot from each other, uh, and from this exciting dialogue, we've be, been able to celebrate the commonalities and the differences that characterize the music we make and the way that music expresses who we are. And so it was from that experience that when Ranyar and Fred came and talked about their idea of a U Arctic Ensemble, I thought this is an ideal opportunity to bring these things together. So a little bit of background here on, on this story. Uh, the bleak and beautiful north coast of Labrador has been home to a nomadic population of Thule culture Inuit for about 800 years. In 1752, just 20 years after establishing the first mission to the Inuit of Greenland, Moravian missionaries crossed the North Atlantic to Labrador. The first permanent mission was established in Nain in 1771 um, by a Greenlandic-born uh, missionary, Jens Haven. And by the dawn of the 19th century, two more stations had been established in Ocock and Hopedale, all on the Labrador coast. <clears throat> and some 600 Labrador Inuit were attached to these three stations as baptized Christians living within settled communities. Although Christianity wasn't always an easy sell for the Inuit, the music that the Moravians brought with them was rapidly embraced. The Moravian traditions of uh, singing chorales in parts, liturgically and celebratory love feasts, and devotionally at home, was early and firmly established in the Labrador missions. So too were the brass bands, which groups of Inuit musicians uh, used to move about the community to celebrate signet events, or call people to worship, or welcome visitors to the community. By the 1820s, the Inuit choirs and instrumentalists were beginning to tackle complex European repertoire of anthems and oratorio movements with great skill and sensitivity. And then in the second half of the 19th century, uh, the Moravians themselves, the missionaries, let go of the music practice and handed it over entirely to the stewardship of the, the Inuit musicians themselves. Uh, few were the visitors to the coast who didn't comment on uh, how sophisticated the musical performance of this music was. So this is a quote from a, a visitor in the 1880s, um, and I won't read through it to you, but you can see that uh, uh, very impressed with the, the sophistication of the music performance. Um, Though these forms of music were introduced by the missionaries, the stewardship of the music on the Labrador coast had transferred to Inuit organists, choir masters, and music leaders. Dynasties of musician families, the Silits of Okok or the Nakasaks of Hebron, assumed responsibility for the vital practice of music in the community. And with the Inuit hand on the music came also a very distinctive Inuit voice. Across the better part of a century, the music was copied over repeatedly. Uh, new manuscripts were made for different communities up and down the coast, and at the hands of Inuit musicians, these recopied manuscripts gradually began to reflect the Inuit way of performing the music as opposed to the European way. Um, and uh, so it was no longer a European product, but something that was very much Inuit. Um, it became a kind of solemn timbral landscape, a landscape, atemporal in its exploration of harmonic riches and um, vocal uh, and instrumental color. The, the repertoire of the Moravian music was no longer just sung in an octatut. Something of its essence had become Inuk. Throughout most of the 20th century, this music practice continued to flourish, but in the last third of the century, the combined forces of secularization, southernization, and a desire to reclaim pre-contact forms of Inuit musical expression led to the demise of the Moravian music. 
on the cusp of reclaiming their political autonomy, the Labrador Inuit sought to express their identity in ways that looked to the deep past, not the near past. And that occasioned a revival of practices that had been forbidden by the Moravian Church, drumming and throat singing in particular. A recent film um, uh, made by a group of young women from the, the Inuit community of Nain speaks to how deeply the past has been motivating the future. I'll just play a little clip from this. I hope I will. I know that it's something that is being brought back, and I think now it's safe to say that it's safe. A lot of young people think it's cool to throw sing. Um, like having some, a special talent that not many people know how to do yet uh, is really, really attracting to young people. When I was, as soon as I learned how to throw sing, I was teaching my children, and they were two years old when they started doing it. But that's the main reason why I started throat singing is because of my grandmother. I knew, like I didn't know at first, like when I was younger, that she throat sang until I, when I found out that's when I practiced a hundred times more than what I originally did in the first place. And my dream was to throat sing in front of her and that's exactly what me and my cousin April did. <laughs> So during the, these years, the last three decades of the, of the uh, 20th century, uh, the Labrador Inuit were moving towards political autonomy, and they are now self-governing land. And, and so it was a time where there was a reawakening of these pre-contact musical expressions. And uh, it was a time where fewer members answered the call to join the choir. One by one, the brass bands dissolved. And uh, early in the 21st century, Moravian music had become something of the domain of memory. Uh, uh, something that the elders uh, thought very fondly of, but felt was no longer a vital practice. In 2003, um, I, yeah, okay. Uh, in 2003, uh, I, I began a digitization practice that would eventually uh, copy and catalog some 25,000 pages of music manuscripts in Anuktitut. Um, from the Labrador uh, Moravian congregations. Uh, this began as an archival project, but evolved into an engagement with the community. It was fortunate there was so much music there that I had to keep coming back over and over again. And gradually, uh, the musicians in the community started sharing with me what their concerns were. Organists were worried about the diminishing choirs. Elders were worried that there would not be the resources to, to uh, sustain uh, complex liturgies. Uh, Mid-generation leaders wanted to find a way to revive the brass bands that had died out, and teachers were seeking material that could engage youth with these traditions that were fast vanish vanishing. There was a disjoint between the tradition bearers and the younger generations, due in no small part uh, to the simultaneous loss of Inuktitut as the lingua franca of Labrador. And um, so there were... Um, uh, a, a, there was a break in the transmission of this tradition. Um, repeatedly, the community members asked if there was something that, that I could do to assist them to reconnect. So in 2008, we took our first initiative, which was to bring a, a brass band uh, up along the coast. And you have to realize that the, the travel to, to Labrador is just excruciatingly difficult. Uh, the, the, bo the boat only runs for, for four months a year. Um, and it only calls, calls in the communities once a week. Um, you can fly in, but sometimes you wait for eight days for the weather to clear enough for a plane to leave. So it's, it's, it's pretty precarious. Anyway, we, we took a, a group of, of university students up and went into each community and, and did concerts with them and workshops highlighting the Moravian traditions. Uh, it was incredibly popular, and the success of this emboldened us to pursue a larger project uh, which would both support community goals around the preservation of the music and also document these traditions in their context. So with guidance from elders and community leaders, uh, we formulated a project to return in the spring of 2011 with a small choir, a string ensemble, a brass quintet, 
and uh, to participate with uh, Inuit musicians in the 10 day long cycle of Easter celebrations. The project began with a workshop uh, at the university in, in St. John's, led by Inuit elders whom we invited to come down and, and coach the university singers and instrumentalists um, on the tradition that um, was, was theirs. For the young musicians from the Southeast Sessions were a revelation, offering insights into a completely different performance style uh, with music that was seemingly familiar. Uh, the first encounter uh, was captured in a documentary film that we co-produced with the National Film Board of Canada uh, called Till We Meet Again. And this is just a clip uh, from um, one of those rehearsal coaching sessions. It's intimidating. Um, we have very limited experience with even just to hear it. So we were a little nervous when John Kerry came to St. John's and they were going to be singing these pieces that they know so well in their language. I'm listening to what he's singing and, and how I would approach it. And he can hit some pretty high notes with a lot of force. So that's been pretty impressive to me. Um, mm -hmm. And it seems to almost come naturally to him. You know the music? Yeah, you can hear it. Okay. Yeah, I do. I need to come to it. It's too much. Oh, yeah. I do too. I'm like this. So the group uh, uh, rehearsed with the, the Inuit leaders uh, in St. John's and then they traveled north, joining local choirs and instrumentalists uh, to celebrate uh, the Easter liturgies over a period of 10 days. The impact of that was, was really profound for everyone. The performances connected the people in the communities with a sense of loss and a sense of pride in their identity. And you can see this in this second clip. Uh, which was uh, one of the liturgy performances in Nain. The visit to Nain ends on a high note. The Nain and St. John's choirs join together in performance of one of the more elaborate Moravian anthems. The reactions to the performances and then subsequently when we toured uh, showing the film in the communities were both reflective and cathartic. Uh, while each of the Inuit communities continued to have active choirs, the brass bands that had once animated community life uh, had all were now all a thing of memory. So 
So after screening the film, the communities asked us to assist them in reviving the brass band tradition. With funding from the Inuit government and a private foundation, we launched Titulautit Nunatsu Vutini. Uh, oh, these are, sorry, these are some of the reactions to the film. I'm, I'm not going to read you through them, but... Um, so we launched uh, Titulautit Nunatsu Vutini, which is a, a network of community bands uh, across the Moravian settlements in Labrador. Uh, for three years of summer workshops and then through a developed online community, uh, much like the kind of community that's being proposed for the University of the Arctic Ensemble, um, we, the brass bands were revived and have since become an indispensable element of every community celebration. Uh, in addition to having, uh, in addition they've become a way for Inuit youth to connect with Inuit elders and to share a sense of community through reviving this music tradition. And this is a little film clip uh, from that. I got into brass band because I heard it, like I listened to the radio with my mom sometimes. I liked the noise and I got interested in it, so I asked one of the, the brass band members and see, and see if I can join. Um, I felt the spirit just all their own name, like I can just feel how my ancestors they was around here and they played violin instruments, they played piano, they played, I mean they played violin and they was in the choir just as I am. I just love being part of the Moravian church and the best band. There have been other initiatives as well, uh, a, a pan Inuit, uh, a pan Labrador Inuit youth choir called Ulug Gyat Suk uh, has been created and uh, has been brought down to the island a couple of times to do workshops with youth choirs in the island. Next week they're actually traveling to Ottawa uh, to sing at the Canada 150 celebrations, which is a big deal for them. So we've worked with the community to continue documenting uh, their music. Uh, uh, to share with other Labrador Inuit communities and to share beyond, uh, providing video and audio resources that help to build an understanding of the ways in which Labrador Inuit express themselves through this music. For us at the university, it has been a step towards reconciliation, uh, working to understand Inuit creativity before, during, and now after the period of colonialism. And in these many ways, we hope to honor our Inuit musicians and to develop a basis for creative collaboration with them in the future. And I certainly hope that's a, a creative collaboration that we can share with the University of the Arctic Ensemble. So, that's it. Thank you. Well, I think we're, we're done. Um, are there any questions? Do you have any CDs? Yes, I do. <laughs> as, it, as it happens, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is there any plans for any touring of, um, maybe also a question for the previous lecture, uh, touring of the World Ensemble as time goes forward in the constellations? I mean, <clears throat> yes. Uh, so the, the first year we would like to, we start off in Tulsa. And then also it's an anniversary for the, for the university, so we will travel around to the campuses, the different campuses in the, in the, in the region of the Norway. Mm -hmm. Then we are hoping to go to, um, the, the plan is yes. to go to uh, St. Petersburg, to the Marinsky Hall, and then from there we will go to New York and to the United Nations, so that, that's the big, here we go. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, but you know, um, whatever can bring us there mm -hmm. and beyond. Are you, um, uh, in regards to funding for, what we, if, if you go on a tour, do you ha do you have public funding or will you look for funding for we that? We look for funding. You know, okay. Yeah. So I work for the MC in Washington D.C. and I was thinking we have, you know, uh, uh, twice a year we have an uh, um, event we call Nordic Cool where we really like to have uh, um, Arctic content for entertainment, and then also the Kennedy Center has something called the Millennium Stage, which is also... Uh, Are you listening? Yes. <laughs> 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 Stop to make applications. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, 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 the problem, um, or 
the um, uh, challenge, so that's yes, the correct word, is that, uh, that um, the amounts of money uh, in the different programs that we can uh, somehow um, apply for, they are simply not big enough. Big enough. It's enough for friend and me to travel around to have workshops, mm -hmm. and then we use our FOU resource for writing music, and then, but it's not enough to actually gather uh, the, the ensemble. So we need to get up at one level or maybe even two levels to find the right sources for funding and to, to bring together, you know, uh, a little bit here. And, and different here. sizes of the ensemble. We mm -hmm. can do that in exactly different, different mm -hmm. in the, a, a model that we can have use. Yeah. Uh, I don't why? know if, if I made that clear in my presentation, but the idea of the, this ensemble is that it's, it's module based, so that we take what we have. The choir can be uh, local or it can be omitted. Or we can have a vocal group. We can have swings or we can mm -hmm. leave them out. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So we, we, it depends on the project and where we go and the resources that are available to us. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I was like, sorry if I'm kind of going there, <laughs> uh, because I thought it was a really interesting concept, but would you also maybe be uh, able to do a digital concert, like a live digital concert for an event? Because we mm, have absolutely. done that before in these events where we have, one, once we had a live, you know, we talked to a captain of a ship that was sailing in the Arctic, and mm. and that was it's very popular to do things like that. Yes, and this is exactly what we, we, what we will do, mm -hmm. and what is part of, what, one of the plans is uh, to, to uh, we have t two plans when it comes to this. We will make recordings and put in a bank so that we have it, that we can use it on, on screen, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to put it into our performance. Uh, the Yakut uh, people or whoever that cannot join us when we are somewhere. Uh, but we will also uh, work with um, live performances online together mm -hmm. with us so that they are actually on, on uh, the performing in real time together with us, even if they are looking at different place in, in the world. So this is a part of the plan. So I, I, I didn't say that, but I, it was a part of my original, uh, even more jumpy, uh, flashy uh, presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can uh, have a quick uh, talk with uh, our dean uh, yeah. after. And, uh, <laughs> I can. <laughs> <laughs> there are also universities in that region that we're talking yes, about that are members of the uh, yeah. university. So, so, so a complex way of putting mm. resources and, and money together. Mm. So it's evolving. Yeah. Because yeah. you just started this project, yeah. mm. 2017. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, oh, oh, actually, we have yeah, we probably have the world record in traveling the world as an ensemble without playing one single note. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think. So, so we have we have really been yeah, around working on this, broke your record. networking, uh, <laughs> drinking beer with, uh, <laughs> and. Uh, no, seriously, we have been working uh, quite a lot, and now, yesterday what you heard was the first thing we have ever done. But it's somehow hope that it shows the beauty of the idea. Yeah. That's what and we want some of the partner organizations will be able to bring resources as well. I mean, one yeah. of the great things about uh, my being here was I was able to connect with all of the Canadian funders and, and present this idea and, and, <coughs> and get the interest uh, funding interest from them. So uh, the, there's always strength in these collaborations because not only do you bring the, the musical resources and the talent, but you also bring complementary funding resources. Uh, and because we're in the, in the arts, there's always an, an in academia um, environment and then it's the out of academia environment. Mm -hmm. and we, are, we have to do both in order to make this both um, artistically happen, <laughs> but also uh, organization-wise and funding-wise. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's an artistic-based research project which is evolving. And every time we meet we have workshops, but also, of course, I'm, I'm a professor in world conducting, so every time I go somewhere I also have master class for the students there, and uh, you know, we work together. And, um, so, National Cathedral in these things and other places. Um, yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, she's looking at me and saying, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we need to go out. Okay. Uh, thank Leave. you, thank you, so thank you for, for coming. Yes, thank you very much.